Prusha just fixed the XL, made it better in almost every way. It's no secret that my experience with this printer so far has been rocky. I've openly shared my disappointment with the print quality, particularly the significant stringing present on nearly every print. In my last video, when I reported on this issue, I mentioned how even a freshly opened spool had heavy stringing. As many commenters correctly pointed out, filament isn't necessarily dry directly out of package. So to once and for all rule out moisture as the root cause, I dried the filament for 48 hours at 75 degrees. And still the stringing persisted. In the meantime, I was able to get many nice single tool prints. It was only when tool changing that the stringing was so significant. As I continued to use the printer, my list of complaints grew. File uploads are slow. Tools can't be reassigned at runtime, meaning that you'd need to reslice to change the tool if, for example, you wanted to print the same file in a different color. Individual objects can't be canceled if one starts to fail, requiring the entire job to be aborted. And perhaps most disappointing of all, besides the stringing, is that the print speeds are considerably slower than what I've become accustomed to. In contrast, my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon has fast file uploads, the ability to remap inputs at runtime, the option to cancel objects mid-print, way faster print speeds, and minimal stringing with the exact same filament. The only thing the XL had going for it were the size and the lightning fast tool changes. 10 seconds elapsed time versus the minute 45 on the X1C, with considerably less waste. So needless to say, I was left feeling disappointed by what could have been. But then, out of nowhere, Prusa released firmware version 5.1 Alpha 2, and everything changed. So let's take a closer look and see if Prusa can win me back over with these changes, or if it's too little, too late. Let's start with the flagship feature, the one we've all been waiting for, input shaping. Input shaping is a firmware trick that influences how the stepper motor currents are modulated. This minimizes the mechanical resonances of the motion system, thereby reducing surface artifacts and enabling higher print speeds. Support for input shaping is one of the main reasons Clipper firmware is so popular, and why so many printer manufacturers are using it on their machines. Input shaping was introduced on the Mark IV a few months back, followed by the Mini just a short time ago. In both cases, print speeds were drastically increased and print times drastically reduced. Worth noting is that neither one of these printers has an accelerometer on board nor the abilities to add one. Prusa has simply provided some pre-canned values for the shaping functions and frequencies. In contrast, clipper-based printers support dynamic tuning with an accelerometer. This makes input shaping parameter identification easier and more precise. I was skeptical at first when I heard that the Mark IV wouldn't be shipping with an accelerometer, but my concerns appear to have been unfounded because the print speeds are fast and the quality is great, even without dynamic calibration. The XL, on the other hand, is a much more complex system with more variables. This makes an accelerometer vital for proper calibration. At least, that's what Prusa says on their FAQ. Interestingly, the input shaping implementation in the alpha firmware lacks dynamic calibration. We simply have static values for function and frequency. Perhaps dynamic calibration will follow, or maybe it has been deemed too difficult to implement and scrapped altogether. No mention of it is made in the blog post or the release notes for the firmware which makes me think it may be the latter. I tried opening up the tool head to see if it had an accelerometer on board, but I was unable to identify one. If it is there, it's not being used right now. As far as the performance, we're provided with two files for evaluation, a 12 minute bonkers benchy and a 36 minute dual tool bonkers benchy. Worth noting is that these are sliced with very minimalistic settings, a single perimeter and lightning infill, which makes the speeds seem faster than they really are. But it's not just the speeds that are improved. There's also a considerable improvement to the stringing. In the blog post accompanying this from our release, Prusa acknowledged the stringing issue that myself and many others have reported. In an attempt to address it, they're reportedly developing a new technique called Z-hop ramping, which will reduce the prevalence of stringing not only on the XL, but on their other printers as well. But this has not been implemented yet. Despite that, the stringing is already less with the new firmware. So what else has changed? In my experience with the XL, there have been two sources of stringing, travel and tool changes. The travel moves create small wispy strings. The prevalence of these is slightly reduced by the faster speeds and accelerations, which provide less opportunity for oozing. The tool changes, which start with a Z lift, leave thicker strings on the surface of the print. At least they did before now. In the latest firmware, the Z lift no longer happens over the print. It happens over the prime tower. 
Interestingly, there doesn't appear to be any mention of this change in the release notes, despite its significant impact on overall print quality. If you appreciate these insights, make sure you hit that like button. So we have less stringing and faster print speeds. But how much faster is it? Are we in bamboo territory now? Well, not quite. In fact, the speed enhancement seems quite modest. I had initially thought that the improvement was dramatic, given the 12 minute Benji, but I was misled by the minimalistic nature of the print settings. When slicing our own files, the time savings are less significant. A Benchy sliced with regular settings sees just a six minute print time reduction with the new firmware. This alpaca model sliced without input shaping firmware takes five hours and 47 minutes to print. With input shaping, it takes four hours and 49 minutes, 58 minutes less. So a more significant difference on larger models. On the X1C sliced with similar settings, it takes four hours and 32 minutes. So Bamboo still has the edge in terms of raw speed, especially on smaller models. For example, the X1 Carbon Benchy takes 34 minutes versus the 49 minutes on the XL. This is a result of the faster average accelerations on the Bamboo versus the Prusa. 10,000 millimeters per second squared infill and 5,000 outer perimeter, compared to 4,000 and 2,500. A dual color Benchy is only reduced in print time by 10 minutes with the new firmware on the XL but it's four hours shorter than the bamboo on account of the much faster filament changing. In addition to input shaping, we also have Prusa's implementation of pressure advance coming with this release. This aims to equalize the pressure in the nozzle during starts and stops and provide consistent flow for sharp corners and smooth seams. Unfortunately, this appears as though it still needs work. The seams on this Benji are very prominently under extruded. Revisiting my list of complaints, they've nearly all been addressed. File speeds are improved thanks to the new binary G-code format, which yields smaller file sizes. The ability to remap inputs at runtime without reslicing has also been added. From the LCD, we can select which tool we'd like to use for a particular print. There's also a convenient new feature called spool join that will allow one tool to sub in for another if filament runs out. We also now have the ability to cancel an object instance mid-print. This is a welcome addition despite not being nearly as convenient to use as in other implementations. Saprusha has listened and addressed many of the concerns that myself and others have had. They've added many useful features and made this a much more complete machine overall. There are still some things that the XL lacks, such as AI failure detection, but it's in a much better state than when I first started working with it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Has Prusa won you back over or is it too little too late? I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the Prusa XL. Make sure you get subscribed for more great content. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.